Hey everybody, do you want to learn how to create a cool icon like this one on my screen? Continue watching the video to find out. All right, hey everybody, Chris State here. So I got this cool icon on my screen. I, I spent the weekend making it, it took about three hours. Uh, it's for my company called Cortain. And um, I posted on some forums online, some subreddits, and a lot of people gave me a lot of feedback and they wanted to know how I created this and uh, what I did to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that and show you guys. I'm gonna put this icon on the left-hand side of my screen here to show you um, as a reference tool to kind of show you um, as we make progress, you know, what it kind of looks like. And that way I also keep a right idea of how to get there. So I'm gonna to open my software here. I use, I use Sketch. It's a design software. It's great for prototyping, designing your apps, web pages, anything really. Uh, it's about 100 bucks a year, and it's only for Mac. Now, don't fret, because if you don't have a Mac or you don't want to spend 100 bucks a year, you don't have to do that. Uh, there's also a program called Gravit Designer. It's almost exactly the same, and it's available for free. It's on both Mac and Windows, and you can run it straight through your browser if you, if you don't want to download a file, or maybe you don't have permissions to download a file on your machine. But it works almost exactly the same. Let's jump into the software here. You can see I have Sketch open. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert... Um, I'm going to insert an artboard here. This is really the the foreground or the foundation of what you can work on or your canvas. And you can see I just chose one called Podcast. It's uh, 1400 by 1400 pixels. That's typically the default album art size of a podcast, but I'm just going to rename this here to Logo. And the first thing you can see right here on the left-hand side is I kind of want to get this border. So I'm actually going to use a rectangle. So I'm going to go up here to Shape Rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle that covers this entire art box, or this entire artboard. And the first thing I want to look at is, I noticed that it's not rounded here. So I'm going to go over here to Radius on the right-hand side, and I'm going to type in uh, 350. Now this isn't like a, a magic number or anything. I just literally played around the slider. You can see right here. I just played around and I realized the 100 wasn't going to work for me. And I just typed in like 350 on, on a guess, and I was like, it looks good to me. But you also notice that it's got kind of like these smooth rounded edges. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to click smooth corners. And you can see here, it creates this quote unquote squircle effect, this square circle. And it makes it look really nice. And it really, in, in the design world, um, this makes it look super nice and actually draws your attention to the center of the object or the center of what you're trying to show them. And that's just, um, um, you know, you can find that in tons of, in tons of products. One of the most familiar ones everyone's probably familiar with is Apple. They do this in all their design, both on their software and on their hardware. Even like the corners of your MacBook is like a squircle, if you look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, the next thing we're going to work on here is we're going to work on the color. So I, the first thing I always do is I just get completely rid of the border. I hate using borders on, on these kind of things. And then the next thing I do is I want to change this. I want to change this to, um, you know, the right color. So we're going to work this this like purplish blue looking color first. I'm going to click fill. And I'm going to grab this eyedropper, and I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to copy this color. You can see there, it's um, the hex code is 4E3390. And boom, look at that nice, pretty background. Now, but this doesn't really give me that half turquoise look, so I want to work on getting that next. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to go into shape, and I'm going to click on triangle. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to draw a triangle. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. And I'm going to double click on it. And the next thing you want to do is you want to grab each vertice and you just want to drag it to a corner. I'm going to do this top right corner, the bottom right corner, and the top left corner. Now that you've got that done, uh, you're pretty much done. So you go over here on the right hand side, you can click finish editing. And we really want to get it um, to match that same color. So we're gonna, again, I'm going to remove that border because no one likes borders. I'm going to click fill. And I'm going to grab this eyedropper and I'm just going to click that. And the hex code for that, if you want to know, is 74 EFCE. -E. So after I click that, we have the same color, but you notice a problem here. The border of this of this square, of this rectangle, as it says, um, is not be, you know, it's not being cut off on this triangle. So we want to make sure that that goes away. So I'm going to click on the rectangle, and there's a tool up here, it's called mask. When you click on mask, it'll actually take whatever's on top of it, no matter, you know, if there's a hundred things on top of it or one thing on top of it over here in this table of contents, and it'll actually It'll actually clip it. Um, it'll mask it. So anything outside of its anything outside of its border, it'll just kind of erase or remove it. So that way you just see the background, which on this art artboard is just white. 
Now that you've done that, you can see you've got a nice turquoise color that, that matches perfectly with half of this squircle or half of this uh, background. Now that we've done that, the next thing I want to work on is I want to work on this white ring that goes around the edges. So to do that, it's really easy. You want to just draw a circle or they have an oval. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw one. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. That looks good to me. I'm just going to stick it dead in the center. And then I am actually going to remove the fill on this and delete that fill. And this time we are going to use borders. So I'm going to make that white. But you notice it's not thick enough. Over here it's pretty thick. So I'm going to change that to like 20. That looks good to me, right? So now that we've changed the thickness, you notice that this thing, it kind of stands out. It, it kind of is, a, is embossed or in bold. So what I did to do that is I just clicked on shadows and I left it as the default. That's pretty good with me. I don't have any problems with that. And so now, boom, we are, we're about halfway there. All we got left is this giant C in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to click insert. And I'm going to click on this shape. And actually, I'm not going to click on shape. I'm going to click on text. And I, I have a font that I used. Um, I'm just going to type in C. And this font is called, let's look at it. Uh, it's called Polya Regular right there. You can go ahead and look that up online. You might have to buy it. But it's just called Polya Regular. And I, um, I love this font. It's great. And I'll go ahead and drag it here in the middle. And you'll notice that. It's treating it as a font, and that's not what we want. But you notice it's kind of made up of a bunch of little triangles. So what we can actually do is we can actually right-click on this C, and we can we can actually click Convert to Outlines. And what that's going to do is that's going to turn all of those little tiny triangle-looking things in that font into actual triangles. You can see if I expand this over here, they're all triangles. So that's really cool. Now that we've got that, I'm just going to center it. Oop. I'm going to click on the C. I'm just going to center it off. Well, so I'm over here on this left hand side. I'm going to click on here and click command and hold hit rectangle. And then you can use these over here to perfectly center it. There we go. Now you'll notice on this left hand side of the table of contents, these little arrows that point down. And then what that's saying is that everything, um, everything above this is being masked into that. And I only want this triangle mask into that. So to get just that masking into the rectangle and not the oval or the C, I want to right click on these, or I want to basically hold shift and click on both of these and then right click on it and group it. And what that group does, I'm gonna name this group background. You don't really re need to rename it, but I'm just gonna rename it. What that does for you is that makes sure the only thing being masked is within this background folder. Everything else is not gonna be masked. After you get done with that, the last thing that we need to accomplish, and I'll zoom in on this photo over here on the left, is we wanna get this where when, when the C crosses the color line, it basically changes color. So we're gonna work on that right now. And it's super easy. So you're going to go ahead and click on this C, and then you're going to hold Command and click on Triangle. And then all you're going to do is come up here, and there's got four. You have Union, Subtract, Intersect, and Difference. You're going to click on Difference. Now this might take a second because you are taking, I think it's something like, you know, 40 or 50 odd polygons, and it's actually going to, it's actually going to go through and run a topology and do a difference on there. And you can see, boom, it's done. Now we're not done yet, we need to actually export this. So I'm gonna click on logo up here and down on the bottom right, I'm gonna click make exportable. And then it actually allows you to export your logo. I'm gonna make sure on this here, when, I, when I'm choosing logo on this left-hand side, that I'm not exporting the background color. And once I've done that, I'm just gonna click export logo and I'm actually gonna save this straight to my desktop. I'm just gonna call this logo. Now that I've done that, I click save. And it's going to go ahead and save. It might take a minute just because it is running a lot of processes. And I think I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and minimize sketch. Minimize there. And this one on the left here is the one I created over the weekend. And this one on the right is what I created right now. You can see it's a little bit different, the size and all that. But that's all personal preference. But you can see the core concept, the colors, the, the scheme, the layout is all exactly the same. If we zoom in on the, on the C here, you can see that as you zoom in, it does change colors. It's very easy, very granular. Um, you can play with sketch to get that to export real nice and pretty. It doesn't have to export like that, but, but overall you can see that it wasn't very hard to create this logo and that you can do it too. All right, guys, if you liked watching this video and you want to see more design and more development videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one.